All right, this is my uh, PC Engine's uh, router unboxing. Um, uh, I use this on clients that are uh, 10 people or less, uh, and uh, internet speed is less than 50, uh, 50 megs down. Uh, it does a pretty good job for environments like that. As you get into bigger environments, you need something more powerful, but this has a good amount of features. Prior to this, I've been using these... Um, Linksys now uh, Cisco routers uh, so these are what used to work in those areas but these are basically obsolete now and they don't provide the uh, the features and uh, reliability uh, Cisco makes an updated version uh, but I still don't use them because I find that uh, PFSense has a lot more features and you can do a lot more with it so let's take a look so uh, standard uh, AC adapter. It's uh, 12 volts, 2 amps. It's a switching AC adapter. It's light. Uh, there's a little light indicator when it's plugged in. It's red. Um, otherwise, nothing special. I haven't had any of these fail for a couple of years now, so it looks like they're decent quality. Uh, but I keep my routers plugged into UPSs, so if you plug them in directly into a power bar or directly into the wall, you might have more failures because of that. But generally plugged into UPS, these, these last a decent amount of time. So next, the actual router hardware. In a bubble wrap, take it out completely. Right. So let's take a look. So there's three uh, ports. Uh, these can be assigned to whatever you want your WAN, LAN, or LAN 2, or WAN 1, WAN 2, and a LAN. Uh, two USB ports. Uh, you can use the USB ports to uh, basically install PFSense. Um, or you can use them to back up your configuration. Um, you have to use a console cable. Uh, there's no VGA port. Um, that's about one li limitation I can think of. Uh, the other is the actual um, LEDs here. Uh, they're really small. They're, they're hard to see when this is actually mounted somewhere or, or sitting flat. Uh, they probably need to do a better job uh, so you can see the status of the LED indicators. I have no idea what is for what, but um, when this thing boots up, it generally plays a little tune. And when you shut it down, it plays a little tune as well, so you know when it's shutting down and booting up. I believe this is a, a factory default uh, pin there. I've never used it any time I've needed to uh, wipe these things clean. I've uh, wiped the SD card on, on a notebook. Um, you can also do a factory default if you're able to log in and uh, do it that way rather than pressing uh, the little pin there. Uh, I'm going to open this up so we can take a look inside. Again, all the sides. So my fingers are really oily so you can see. Uh, Usually I get the red ones. Uh, I'm not sure how we got a, a black one this time. Uh, I get the red ones because it's a lot easier to tell someone at a remote office to look for the red box um, on the wall that's mounted to a wall. Uh, and uh, you're able to identify it much easier. With the black box, there's lots of black boxes all over the place, so it, uh, it's a little confusing. So this was probably a mistake. Uh, I don't know why they ordered a black one, but... Um, it doesn't matter. Functionally, it works the same way. Um, so let's let's open it up. So always a magnetic tip screwdriver, really uh, useful. And when you're tightening these again, don't tighten too hard. Usually just uh, 
finger tight uh, if you have a screwdriver like this where you can do that. So these come apart really easy. Uh, so there you go. That's the full thing. Uh, so this is the aluminum case, the, uh, the top part. Alright. Alright, it's almost impossible to make a YouTube video without a phone going off. Uh, so this was my second attempt uh, at uh, doing this because my cell phone went off earlier. But uh, let's go, let's continue. Uh, so we uh, usually order these with the um, with the, the M SATA discs that would uh, plug in here. But we found that the, the ones they were shipping them with, not the third party M SATA, like Kingston or some of the uh, other manufacturers, they were really becoming corrupt. Uh, so it was it was really easier just to use SD cards even though they're slower uh, and they're much more reliable than the M SATA cards that these were being shipped with. So besides the uh, M SATA slot here you have a uh, PCI 1 Express and sorry PCIe Express 1 and PCIe Express 2 so you can uh, put in uh, additional modules for for wireless if you wanted to and there's a standard SATA port here so you can actually fit in um, a SATA disk drive um, I've never done it with this with this model I, I wouldn't know exactly how to fit it in but it's possible. Maybe the motherboard can also be used in a different casing that would fit much better. But uh, I've never used the, uh, the SATA port for anything. Uh, so SD card and M SATA ports for disk storage. Um, there's not much more to this. Uh, I, I haven't done anything else besides use these as routers. Like I said, it doesn't come with a, a VGA port or any kind of display port. So it's just the, uh, a console cable. So this wouldn't be very useful as a, as a general purpose PC. The, uh, the processor that comes with this is the, uh, it's an AMD processor. And uh, it's, a, it's a one gig processor. It's a dual Bobcat core, it's 64 bit uh, processor. Uh, this is a 4 gig RAM version. It also comes in um, a 2 gig version, but uh, we use the 4 gig. It's it's just not not that expensive. Just a few dollars more to get the 4 gig version. And um, let's see what else we got here. All right. So the um, the Ethernet ports, these are Realtek ports, um, not too crazy about the Realtek chipset. Um, I prefer the Intel ones, they're much more reliable when it comes to running PFSense. So these will run for months without any problems and if you have a good load it, it can handle it very well. But if you have an area where you have a heavy load, uh, the Realtek uh, Drivers don't seem to be as great. You'll see a lot more disconnects in in the uh, in the router logs than you do with Intel hardware. So I don't know if it's this specific Realtek chipset that's on this, but uh, I see more errors on these little units than the equivalent Intel setups. So it, it must be the the drivers. I don't have any other reason for it. But generally, this is a, a nice little router with. Uh, enough features for for a small setup so as long as you back up the uh, the configuration uh, so initially you can back up just the uh, config file or you could take out the whole card here uh, and and back it up uh, using a, a notebook uh, SD card reader um, so you can take a blank one and just uh, restore it and just plug it back into wherever you have one of these units and it'll, it'll be exactly like replacing a, 
uh, a disk drive. So it, it's that's one of the benefits of using SD cards is that you can have spares if the configuration goes corrupt. You just swap them out very easily, or if you have a lot of remote locations, it's something that could you know be easily shipped or have a second one on standby to swap out if something goes wrong, rather than having an extra set of hardware. So the, if anything is going to go wrong in these, it's uh, probably the SD cards becoming corrupt because you don't have it on a UPS or because it's uh, you, you shut it down uh, unexpectedly by unplugging it from the uh, of the power source. But uh, otherwise, these things are pretty steady, and uh, I highly recommend recommend them. So you got the it's a PC Engines one gig processor. It's the AMD G series T40E, and that's the um, unboxing and teardown of this device.